Oh, Sean, Linux sounds great, but what can you actually do with it? It turns out quite a bit. Now, like we learned before, there's all sorts of types of Linux. There can be desktop Linux, uh, Linux that's just server-based embedded Linux, but I want to talk about specifically the applications that you can use with Linux as the underlying kernel and operating system. So let's go to a desktop first and I'll show you what sorts of things are available. Okay, so first things first, this is Ubuntu Mate. This is one of my favorite Linux distributions. Uh, it's based on Ubuntu, obviously, and it has the Mate interface. But anyway, this comes with what they call the software boutique. Most distributions are going to have their own version of the App Store. They're going to call it like the Software Center or maybe the App Store or the Software Marketplace, something like that. But basically, every distribution is going to have some GUI front end for installing packages on the desktop. And they all work pretty much the same. We, there's a bunch of topics here, a bunch of uh, categories, I guess. There's accessories, and you can scroll and install whatever you want. Education-based software packages. Games. Yes, there are games in Linux. Uh, there's graphic programs where you can manipulate graphics. There's just all sorts of things, including things like browsers that you would probably maybe be a little surprised to see like Firefox is on here, but also you can install Google Chrome right in Linux, just like you would on your Windows or Macintosh computers. There's also Office software that allows you to do things that you would normally do with something like Microsoft Office, uh, along with other Office tools like, oh, let's see, Thunderbird, for example, is an email client that works a little bit like uh, Microsoft, oh, what is the Microsoft one? Um, Outlook, a little bit like Outlook. Also, Evolution is here, and this is like, oh, right there, alternative to Microsoft Outlook. So there are tons of applications, including all sorts of programming. You can do video editing. Pretty much every task that you can do in Windows and Macintosh, you can do in Linux. The name of the program might be a little bit different and it might work a little bit differently, but you're going to be able to find a program that's going to work, like LibreOffice or OpenOffice. These are related programs. Uh, this, for example, is LibreOffice Writer. LibreOffice has a bunch of different apps included in the suite that will take the place of things like uh, LibreOffice Writer takes the place of Microsoft Word. But then there's also, let's see, there's a Libra Office Writer, Math, Impress, which is a lot like PowerPoint, Draw. I don't even know what that one's like. Calc is like Excel. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, com not well, they are compatible, but a lot of comparable applications to what you would find in Windows or OS X. And most of them are very, very powerful. For example, here is one that's called GIMP, Graphic Image Manipulation Program. And this is a program that you can use a lot like Photoshop to edit photos or do drawing, things like that. And what I have listed here is another whole set of applications that people often associate with Linux. All of these programming languages are available. Most of them are free. Now there are a handful of languages that are going to be specific to either Windows or OS 10, like Swift and uh, for OS 10, I don't know what there is for, for Microsoft that is specific to Microsoft, maybe .NET. I'm, I'm not really a programmer and I'm not a Windows guy, but most uh, real serious development programs or platforms, uh, languages, are going to uh, exist in Linux because a lot of the stuff has to run on Linux in the cloud or on servers. So these are just off the top of my head, but like C, C++, Java, JavaScript, Perl, Bash, Python, PHP, Rust, Golang. There's so many others. Like, what, Ruby? Uh, I don't even know if Ruby's a thing anymore, but most of these, well, all of these and most programming languages are going to be available on Linux and you can install them either using the GUI tools or you can use the command line to install, which we'll look at a little bit later. So let's get this out of the way. I also want to show you the programs that I didn't want to install, but I just wanted to show you kind of what they are for. Like, for example, uh, Firefox has an email client called Thunderbird. I mentioned that earlier and it's kind of like Microsoft Outlook. It'll, it connects to email programs and that sort of a thing. Uh, if you are a fan of like Google Docs and that sort of a thing, you can actually create your own server-based program using either OwnCloud or NextCloud. These are actually related. It's kind of a long story, but OwnCloud and NextCloud, which allows you to connect to a server that you can host and connect via web browser and do things like have documents and spreadsheets and it replaces things like Dropbox and it, there's so many powerful things that you can do 
on a Linux system using things like Nextcloud. And you can also install the traditional services, things like Apache, which is just a web server, not just a web server. It's probably the most popular web server on the planet, uh, runs on Linux. It's designed to run on Linux. Uh, you can get Nginx, which is an alternative to Apache, but still completely free and open source where you can use. It's another web server. Uh, you can do database services on, on your uh, Linux machine using MariaDB or MySQL or Postgres SQL you know, or Postgres database. I don't even know what all that stands for, but there are tons and tons of server applications. And if you're thinking about installing server applications, you're probably thinking of what most people think about when they think about Linux and they expect it to all be just text on a screen. Because if this is a server, chances are it's not going to have this really beautiful GUI interface. It's just going to be a command line where you install things. And I thought a really good way to uh, end this introduction to all of the Linux apps that are available would be to install an application. So let's do, it's okay if you don't understand the commands I'm typing, we're gonna cover them uh, in, in later videos, but uh, sudo apt install Apache 2 password and it's going to install right on this desktop computer this virtual machine that we're running it's going to install apache on the local computer because remember you can run server applications on a desktop machine that's fine because the linux kernel is underneath remember all of this desktop stuff is just software that's running on top of the linux kernel so you can install server stuff like this apache thing that we're installing right now as well now, I do want to point out, when I just installed Apache on this Ubuntu Mate box, I used a program called apt because that is the command line tool for installing things on a Debian-based operating system. But if you remember from before, there are other distros that use different bases, like the Red Hat systems. Red Hat uses RPM-based package management, and so you would use a different tool. You wouldn't use apt to install packages. You would use something like yum to install a package onto uh, a Red Hat based system. But here on Ubuntu, we would use apt or we could do, do individual packages using a program called dpackage, but boy, that's really getting pretty deep into the weeds. So apt is for Debian based things. And that's what we did. We installed a web server on this computer. Well, let's see if it's running. I think it runs by default. So what we'll do is go to HTTP colon slash slash localhost and see if it's running. And look at that, we installed on our local computer, Apache 2. And so now we have a full blown web server running on our desktop machine here, and we can access it with a web browser. It's that easy to install packages, even using the command line tools rather than using that software boutique or whatever. It was that easy to install it right on the command line. So when somebody says, well, what can you actually do with Linux? That's a loaded question because you can do pretty much anything with Linux and really depending on what you want to accomplish is the type of Linux distribution you're going to install, whether it's server or desktop, and then what software you want to install, whether you want to do graphic manipulation or you want to do spreadsheets, whatever you might want to do, that's going to determine what you install and what you have to do on your Linux machine. It's not what's available because there's so many things available. You wouldn't even believe the amount of packages that you can install, uh, but Linux allows you to do all of those things and it's all free. At least most of the packages uh, that you're going to install on Linux are going to be free. Certainly all the ones in the software boutique, everyone that we looked at today, you can install them. They're open source and they're free. So remember, learn everything, do what you love and be kind. I hope you stick through, through with us on this series. It's going to be fun. We're going to learn a lot about Linux. I'll see you at the next video.